Hello, hello, and welcome, everybody. JB here with JB's RCs. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're out with the Danchi Ridge Rock, the Red Cat Danchi Ridge Rock. This is an MOA crawler, one-tenth scale. Uh, my very first one-tenth scale crawler that I ever bought. I did have a few 16th and 18th scale like WPL crawlers. Uh, this was the very first one I got that was MOA for one and 10th scale for two. Uh, and very quickly got into the crawling scene. As you know, if you're already subscribed, I am a crawler guy for sure. I have at least 25-ish crawlers right now, I think. Uh, most of them one tenth scale. Uh, I do have one one sixth scale and one uh, two 18 scales, one of which is going to be for sale soon. So just one 18 scale, um, which I probably might sell. I'm not into the smaller ever, stuff anymore. Out of this thing, so. But this truck is phenomenal. Uh, if you haven't tried a Danchi Ridge Rock, yeah. they're probably the cheapest tenth scale crawler you can buy. Uh, just over 100 bucks, I think, for these. And that comes with the battery, remote, everything. Uh, I think it even comes with batteries for the remote in the box. A few little modifications uh, really will set these things up like crazy. Um, things that I've done that I thought I needed to have were the first thing I did was the steering arms. So you can't really buy aftermarket parts for these, which I cannot believe a, a company hasn't jumped on this because I'm in a few forums and there are thousands of people that own these and love them and have modified them out the woo some of them. Uh, but mine, I did uh, the metal steering arms, which I made from scratch. Uh, I found a video of a guy who did it and he kind of gave me the idea. So I have three millimeter threaded rod with actual brake line over top of it as the steering arms that go all the way across. And I just cut it to length and, and, and molded it to the shape. It's pretty easy to bend. Just make sure you bend it once you put the brake line on. Don't try to bend the threaded rod first. Uh, the reason you want the threaded rod on the inside is so you can put the rod ends on there that'll connect to the uh, steering knuckles on each side. Because this is four-wheel steering, so you have steering on front and rear axles, so you'll need to do this for both axles. Um, and then I just bought a connecting piece that was adjustable to connect from the steering horn to that uh, steering knuckle and steering arm. And I also took off the servo savers, plastic servo savers that were on there, and put some metal servo arms on there. So that was what I did for the steering. Stiffened everything right up. The old ones were real flexible and your tires would turn different ways on you. Um, kept the stock servos because I run on 3S and it makes them super powerful. This truck is also very light, so it doesn't need a whole lot of power uh, to turn the wheels. Um, I barely ever, if, if never, uh, use the four-wheel steering on this, which it has four-wheel steering. So all sorts of different steering modes, all controlled from the remote. Just push a button to switch between the different ones. Um, but the way I have mine set up and the way I like to crawl, I like just my front wheel steer. Um, a couple other little additions, modifications, upgrades, of course, are the uh, 1.9 beadlock metal rims and the 1.9 Proline Hyrax tires. Those are running the Proline dual stage foams inside, which are a little stiff for this truck because it's so light, but they still work great. This truck, it's fantastic. You'll see some of the stuff this thing does. Is, and because it's so cheap and so light, you really just kind of throw it over stuff too. You're, I'm constantly, you know, just like, oh, I'm just going to floor it and see what happens. Because even if it rolls down the side of the rock hill, it's really not going to hurt it. All right, so yeah, that slow-mo is for a gentleman who asked me about the steering arms. It's kind of why I went into a little more detail about them this time than I normally do. Uh, he was just asking about them. And then I did that little slow-mo shot of the steering arms themselves. So whoever that guy was, I can't remember the name off the top of my head right now. Um, but you can pause right there on that spot and check those out just to see what they look like. Um, I did have them painted all black. Um, but of course, the brake line is like a aluminum gray color uh and it's stripped off the paint from those that aluminum just from smashing against rocks and stuff so they're pretty much down to the aluminum color you could paint them any color you want and repaint them of course um i do want to do switch out the plastic rod ends that i have in there for some metal ones eventually but uh, i haven't had any problems with the plastic ones again since the truck is so light not a problem um last couple little things that i did to it were of course the body you can see there that's a uh, trx4 sport body that i just trimmed the craziness out of um, so that the articulation would work as good as I could uh, without making the body look too much like not a truck body. 
uh, fit on there perfect. I just drilled some holes in the sides and used the side mounts that were on there on the original body. Um, as far as the wheelbase goes, it was pretty much perfect. Um, and I, it's only because I last thing I did to the truck was I dropped the suspension down a lot. Uh, I bought some of those um, shock extensions that people put on the tops uh, and mounted to the frame. Um, so as of right now, those shocks that are on there are literally touching the body on the inside. Uh, if you can't see from the video itself anyways looking, uh, the shocks are way higher, so I dropped the truck down, I would say, probably a solid inch lower than where it was. And of course, because I dropped it down, it actually extended the wheelbase out further. Um, the way this is set up, the wheels push out as the body goes down. So it's a little bit longer wheelbase now and way lower to the ground. Uh, of course, that did mess with the articulation. Um, having this body on there also does mess with the articulation. But again, I found that lots of articulation is bad. The, if it's really up that high, you're, it's going to want to flip the truck over. Because that's where all your weight is usually is your axle, especially with something like this motor on axle. Um, another thing I don't know if you've noticed in this video so far is that with the way this is set up, it's got dual motors, so one in each axle, 380 size motors, I believe, or 360 size. Um, and it has clod stall, which if you're not familiar with that, basically you have a throttle control that's running both front and rear axles. When you're climbing up stuff, all the weight of the truck is on the back tires and less weight on the front. So when sometimes when I'm pushing the throttle, just the front tires are spinning. It's almost like having an overdrive. Uh, in there but sometimes you don't want that you want the back tires to grip and, and pick you up and to do that sometimes with this you have to push the throttle so much that it it wants to flip it over because it's getting too much juice uh, or the front tires are just spinning like crazy um, trying to pull it up over while the back tires aren't spinning at all so sometimes it is a great help and sometimes it's a little bit of a hindrance um, I would rather have it than not have it on this truck itself honestly uh, because it's so light um, but Another thing real quick too, while we're watching um, this, I'm so proud of this shot, by the way, this is such a long shot. I'm on the side of a hill that's 45 degrees for the most part with loose dirt and rocks. Somehow kept the truck in frame on this with, with the camera at my feet, by the way. I don't know if you guys know, I record with the camera down by my feet. That's why I get these good angles. Um, so I can't see the screen on the camera at all to see what I'm recording. I'm just hoping that I get stuff. But somehow this long, I mean, this is a good two minutes straight where I'm following this thing on the side hill, all these rocks, and somehow I keep it in frame. So I just want to say I'm proud of myself for this shot. That, that shot right there, probably one of my favorites. Uh, stay tuned. We got some real nice tires and rims going on this and some weights uh, for the next round. So please go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, and smash that notification button. Feel free to share the videos. And get out there and have some fun. Thanks for watching.